Hi everyone, Hermano here and welcome to the channel again. So this is part 3 of how to install Nextcloud on Ubuntu server with SSL and access from external network. So we already installed Nextcloud on Ubuntu server and this video is going to focus on installing SSL and accessing this installation from outside your local network. So I will begin by creating the domain I want this Nextcloud installation to have. So there are many providers who can do dynamic DNS. The one I chose is actually Cloud DNS. One is because it has some free options and second because it's very easy to configure. So if we head over to the Cloud DNS website, you can create a new account here, it's free. And once you've done that, you'll come to the dashboard and you want to register a new domain. So you click here on add new, where are the DNS zones options. And, and from these options here, we'll choose the free zone because that's the one which is free. So we'll click here and now we can select the domain name. So we have two choices here, DNS-cloud or DNSABR.com. So I'm going to choose the second one. It's a little bit easier to type. And for the domain name, I'm going to choose, for example, next F cloud. And then I'm going to click register. So the domain is now registered and we need to create now an A record so that the domain points to our public IP. So I click on the A record domain here and I'm going to create a new one by clicking add new record. And I'm going to leave this empty as next F cloud is my domain. And I'll have to point this to my public IP. So to find your public IP, you'll just go to Google, for example, and type in IP. And you'll see your public IP here. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it into the points to here. And click Save. So once we have done that, we need to click on these two arrows, the up and down arrow here, because this is the dynamic URL we need. And it's not yet active, so we need to activate it by clicking Activate it. And we will need this info here to paste in our router. So let's switch over to my router. So this is the part of the installation which will really depends on how your router is configured. I had issues with my previous router. I had to ask my ISP to give me another one as I wasn't able to configure dynamic DNS with the old one. So this one is working much better. Yours will be different. You'll have to check with your ISP, but I'm gonna show you how it works on my modem. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to find out which IP our next cloud installation has. And if I switch over here to my terminal and I type in IP space A, I'll see my installation is the one ending with 31. So I'm gonna go back here to my home network and click on network. And I see here I have a 31 IP, which is my next cloud install. So I'm going to click on the edit button here. And I just want to make sure that this IP is always assigned to this device because when it restarts, it might change the IP and then we have a broken installation. So I'll click here and I want to also check this box, start this computer automatically as soon as it is accessed from the internet and then click OK. So the next step would be to open ports 80 and 443, which are the ones for HTTP and HTTPS. So to do this in my modem, I'll go under internet and permit access. And I'll click on add device for sharing. And I'll have to select my device on the list here. So I'll scroll down until I find next cloud, which is this one. Now I have two of them. I'll have to check which IP is that. This is 29, it's not the one. I have an IP of 31 and that's the one. So then I'm going to click on new sharing and as application, I'm going to select here HTTP and it's automatically configured for the port 80, which is absolutely okay. And then click okay. And I'm going to click again to new sharing because I want to select also HTTPS and port 443 is also selected. So it's fine. And then click okay. And then click okay again to confirm. And now my HTTP port is open and active, my HTTPS not yet. So I'll just click apply to refresh this. And now both ports are open. So now that the ports are open, we need to configure the dynamic DNS. So I have a tab here for dynamic DNS in my router. And when I click here, I can click use dynamic DNS. And I have a list of providers here I can choose from, but cloud DNS is not one of them. So I'll have to go to user defined. 
And for update URL, we'll have to paste in the information CloudDNS gave us. So I'll go back to CloudDNS and I'll have to paste this link, which is the update link, which will update our IP when our router, for example, starts again and will change the public IP. So I copy this information and go back to my modem and paste it in here. Now I need to also change the domain name as this is not the one I selected. So I'll type in next efcloud.dnsavr.com and then I'll enter my username and the password and I'll click apply. There you go. Now if I go to overview, you'll see that our dynamic DNS is now enabled. The domain is there and it's locked on. That means everything is working fine. So now we have a domain name. We need to tell our Nextcloud installation that we have this domain name and it has to be accessible. So to do that, I'll go back to the terminal here and I'll clean up one time the terminal too. And I want to actually navigate to this directory. So I'll go to cd for change directory slash var slash www slash html slash nextcloud slash config and hit enter. And now I will need to edit the config.php file. So to do that, I'll type in sudo nano config.php and hit enter. So I need to scroll down here under the array of IPs that are actually allowed to access my installation. So I create a space here and then scroll up and enter this string. So one equal then the greater than sign, and then a single quote, and our domain. So in my case, next efcloud.dnsabr.com. And then single quote again and a comma. Once it's done, you hit Control O and Enter to save the file, and Control X to exit the editor. So now that we configure the ports and the dynamic DNS, we can actually install the SSL certificate. So to do that, I'll need to actually download the Let's Encrypt software. And I'm going to go first to another directory, which is the local directory, to download that. So I'll type in cd slash user slash local. And now I'll type in sudo git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash let's encrypt and then slash let's encrypt again and when you're ready you just hit enter so now if we type in ls you'll see we have a let's encrypt directory and we need to go in there so we'll type in cd let's encrypt and hit enter and now we can run the installer by typing in sudo dot slash let's encrypt dash auto space dash dash apache space dash d space and then our domain. So next in my case fcloud dot dns abr dot com. And when you're ready, you just hit enter. So it's going to take a moment to download now and install everything. And I'll be back in a second. The installation of the packages succeeded. Now, before the SSL installs, we need to enter an email address used for urgent renewal and security notices. So I'll enter here mine. and hit enter. Now I have to agree to the terms, so I'll type in a capital A and hit enter. And in this case, I don't actually want to receive emails with news, so I'll type in N and hit enter. And now it's asking us to whether we want to redirect or not the HTTP to HTTPS traffic. So I want to do that, so I'll type in the number two option and hit enter. And now it says, congratulations, your certificate has been installed. So one last time, I will restart our Apache server. So I'll type in sudo systemctl restart apache2 and hit enter. And now I'll go out from the terminal and I'll open up my browser 
and I'll go to a private window and I'll type in the domain name. So in this case, next efcloud.dnsabr.com slash nextcloud. If you remember, we installed Nextcloud under the Nextcloud directory. If you actually want to install Nextcloud on your main directory so that when you type in the domain, you go to Nextcloud directly, you will have to then install Nextcloud on the HTML directory instead of the Nextcloud directory. But in my case, I don't want to do that because I might need to install something else on my server. So I type in slash Nextcloud and hit enter. And I have my installation here with my domain and HTTPS active. So now I can log in. and everything works fine. So this is one way how to access your Nextcloud installation from outside your local network with SSL. As I mentioned before, it will depend a lot from your router, but at least I could show you how it works for me. And so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, make sure you like it by clicking the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of future videos. Subscriptions really helps us out, guys. And if there is anything specific you want me to cover or you have any question, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.